Hola, hola. I am Trek with two Ks. And I am 3D and welcome to Metaverse is the other side. Brought to you here on the Gentleman of Crypto Network. Just a heads up, this episode is before we had the idea of bringing the Twitter spaces to the Gentleman of Crypto Network. And so that's why we're talking about the stuff that we're talking about in this episode. Like, Absolutely. Of, like, and, and this is a double edged nature of technology that always like it's my little fear on, I like the techie stuff, but then when I think about the counter side of it, where it's like, oh, well, how would you actually screw people over with this? It's always like, oh, well, we just do it, 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 is, it is very easy to figure out how to screw people over with any of the new tech stuff. Like that's the part that scares me and annoys me with technology and innovation. Like it's cool. I like it because it's like, oh, wow, we can do this now. But like, it isn't even that the tech is bad. It's the, well, here's the application of it in this kind of desired end result. Yeah. The, the, the funkiness of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, Ooh, I'll give you another example of like crossing this whole thing of metaverses and like virtual reality, right. And, and, um, CBDCs and carbon credits. Oh man, like when this carbon credit market really starts pushing, and I want to say it'll probably be no later than 2025 when it really starts pushing at the retail level. Um, it like, we're going to look back on this and be like, yo, you remember before carbon credits were a thing for regular everyday people? Like, hey, um, can I, can I give a quick example? Do you remember when credits be before credit scores? Mm. No, I mean, like think of it, think about that. It's the exact same thing. Carbon credit is just another form of credit score. Uh, like you can probably remember, do you remember a time before social credit score? Yeah. Right. But like, I, I actually remember a time where I didn't know anything about credit scores and I saw people in farm areas you know, trying to get loans using like, okay, I have property, I have assets, I have this, I have that. And then I remember, I think it was in like high school, I met someone and their, uh, their parent was a doctor and I was talking and like, we were talking cause they were a friend and they were just talking about how, yeah, they were like, well, my credit score is high enough. I was able to get this car and we were able to purchase blah, blah. And I was just like, wait a minute, what the fuck's the credit score? You know? And it was like, that's the first time I ever heard of it. So I was like, there was a point in time where credit scores didn't mean anything. And if you had a credit score, it was okay. But if you had a bad credit score, it didn't affect you. Nowadays, you can be denied jobs if your credit score is low enough, which is basically the same thing as a social credit score, right? So covering credit, it's going to be the exact same thing. And you're right. 2025 retail at Walmart's already there. I'm waiting for someone to get smart enough and go, I have a carbon credit. I should create a cryptocurrency that the less carbon problem I have. So the more carbon credit I have, the more like of this cryptocurrency could be minted and that will allow people to then, you know, offset that or say, use it as leverage basically. Okay. So here's my, okay. Let me give you the scenarios and the part of the example of what's being tested out now in Canada and Australia. So, um, there's a bank in Canada that's going to launch a trial run on a credit card that allows you to see the thing that you purchase and what it means as far as the carbon footprint, how much carbon was generated quote off of what you purchased. Right. Um, then, uh, there's a, there's a similar program in Australia being tested out, but the difference in their program is you can actually. And this is what I'm talking about as far as like the market and what it's going to be to the retail level, because this is already going on at the corporate level where they can buy, um, unused credits from other, excuse me, other corporations. So when the company's like, oh yeah, we reduced our, uh, carbon footprint by blah, 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 blah. And they're like, they're like a fucking, a mining company or something, or, um, um, an iron work company, like. No, what they did was they still kept producing X amount over their limit, but then, then they bought another company that doesn't produce as much to lower what their official end number is. 
Then the I, last. I actually know exactly that because there's a company that just start buying off a bunch of farmland and some country and they have carbon credit. And what they were doing is they were planting palm trees and selling off their credits. And that's their entire business revenue. Yep. Um, so the one in Australia, what they're doing is it allows you to go onto a market and then in that market, you can buy carbon credits from whatever the other entity is that would allow you to lower what your carbon credit, um, amount is. So you would offset it. Now these are being tested out in two first world tier com countries with like, you know, first tier economies or whatever. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that looks come 2025. Now, where does this metaverse thing, augmented reality stuff come in and CBDCs? Cause I also, it, you know what I think is interesting? Nobody's saying it, but I think there are plans to connect CBDCs to carbon credits. I yeah, there is actually like, th there's already someone, that, a dev that has found an algorithm to do something like that, where, um, they will basically be able to remove money out of your bank account based on your carbon credit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me give this example of the uh, thing. Um, so augmented reality metaverses, um, so you know how we have like historical places and, you know, uh, the, what are the, the, the eight wonders or whatever of the world. And, yeah. um, those places get thousands and hundreds of thousands of people a year. Right now, I could honestly see this. We get to a point where there's enough captured, um, visual and there's a, the technology is advanced enough to where like you can pull you know, virtually go to wherever that place is. And like, you're looking at like how big the wall is and you see the color and you know, all of that stuff. But then we get to a point where, Hey, you know, having all these people come here is really producing a lot of carbon, um, um, emissions. So we're going to start limiting how many people can go to this place. Or they'll do some kind of incentive to get people to do the virtual option of it over the in-person option. And then the selling point is going to be like, Hey, if you're in another country, you don't have to fly all the way to this place. Hey, if you're in another country, you don't have to worry about your safety or your security. You don't have to worry about, um, the whole thing of getting a hotel booking. You can do it all from the comfort of your living room, or they might start off doing like, um, travel center places where you go there. And then like, you're in like a little booth cubicle thing. And like, you know, you get the whole virtual immersion experience. The whole idea behind it is that now it's limiting your ability of movement. So you can't travel the way you was traveling before. And I'm not saying this shit is going to happen like tomorrow, but I could definitely see down the road, the whole thing of limiting people's ability to like, quote, vacay or even just travel and then be like, Hey, um, it would be better if you did this thing virtually. And if you do it though, your carbon credits is going to be X amount or your carbon emission is going to be this amount. And it's going to be a penalty for doing that shit. And that's for the regular everyday average person, the market cycles and the market ecosystems that are generated off of the combination of carbon credits. The CDC, the CBDC thing, and like the, the virtual tourism, I feel like they go hand in hand and it's going to go through X amount of growing pains. And I don't know, like at a certain point, do we just be like, all right, this just isn't working. It's too many issues. There's too many hacks going on or the, the economy or the market isn't working the way we thought it was going to work. But I figured like there, there like there has to be at least like two to three generations that they are going to get out of that. And when I say uh, they, I mean like in regards to like the, the master planners and people who are into like the more pushing tech down from a, a, 
a, a, a hierarchy system of top down in relation to like corporation and government partnership stuff. I, I don't see an end to it. Like, for example, China already does restrict based on, in, you know, your, um, your COVID card as well as your job. So basically if you have no job in China, you're not allowed to leave China to against the law. But if you have a job that makes over a certain amount of money, you're uh, given so many days to, that you can leave China for business only, whatever. But if your COVID is green and you make, I think it's over 3 million, uh, I, I was looking at the thing, it was US dollars. I don't know how much yen that actually is or one that actually is, but then they allow you to have vacation time. So that stuff already is happening. What's up, Bobcat? Uh, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, Chris Rice and I were having this conversation actually with Bobby Lee, uh, Charlie's brother, and it, because he lives like five months out of the year in Shanghai, and he said it's it's worse than what you see. He said it's terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my wife and I, we actually have friends in China, and in, uh, I also have friends in Hong Kong too. Um, and so when we talk to them, they're we hear some of the shit that's actually going on and stuff and how bad it really is. Cause you know, they have a CBDC and they've had a CBDC since like 2016, uh, China does. And it's up to a point now where, um, like literally China can track everyone at any point in time. Like they can point you down to like the nearest quarter meter or something like that, like really small distance. And, um, if you're, if China says you're supposed to be in location A, and you're actually in location B and you get caught being in location B from like trying to go in a building because they, it does a face scan every person. Um, you get, you get ticketed, you get fined and that affects your social credit score as well as your COVID card now. And, um, in this, uh, show, the series, uh, they also have that in the area that the will section where section nine is the country section nine is, which in case you're wondering, it actually is China. Uh, but it's a new form in China that actually contains all of Asia, including parts of Russia. Um, but, uh, they already have a thing where you can't leave that country ever. You have to have diplomatic, uh, something to actually exit that, that entire country. And it's not just that one country. Cause when they talk throughout the shows and stuff, they'll talk about like the USA and they'll talk about the English, um, ch the English, uh, channel, which is like all of Europe becomes what they call the English channel. And what they're basically saying is because of whatever, you can't leave one country and go to the next because it's, those are the only three countries in the world, USA, English channel, China. And they already have that thing where they're like, look, you can't leave. And so something you will hear constantly in that show is, no, 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 I have diplomatic immunity. And it's like this big thing because that's the only saving grace they have. And I almost feel like, like, so I remember the first time I heard about carbon credit, it was pushed as a tax. Well, if a company has a lot of carbon, we can make them basically pay higher taxes to keep doing what they're doing instead of just finding them. Right. And, but for doing that to regular people, that becomes more than a tax that becomes a, a life changing event. So like you were saying, we're going to, you can't go see the lightning tower of peace anymore, even if you live in that area, because it will make your car ring go up too high and you'll get in trouble. But if you're rich enough, you can. See, and then like, that's the other thing. It was, it like, I can see it starting off on those things that no one is really thinking about as like, oh, why does that matter? Like, I don't go there anyway, or like, that's not something that is relevant to my life. And that's going to be the most everyday average person, like where you don't think of it any real way, which one of the things points that I was making with that is, um, well, with, uh, with the revolution space, cause we were talking about Egypt and what they're doing with augmented reality for the museums and like the pyramids and stuff like that. They, they just um, released the tomb where you can go through the Sphinx and stuff right. virtually. So my issue in part is the gate guardism that will then develop around that inherently. Why? Because if you just let any and everybody access the information, like it, you, if you can't control the information that people access, 
And what's funny, what, what I think is really funny about this thing, as far as like how education in, in the crypto space goes, but education in general goes is like, well, we have to do X amount of entertainment to it. Um, or like we have to do it where there's a certain level of, um, of, of, of what's the word? Like the Oracle side setup. Like we have to know that like, this is like, <clears throat> excuse me, like valid and trusted information and stuff. And it's like, I hear you, but if we look at what we've done so far in this whole thing of where we work to, um, distribute information in these decentralized mechanisms or these decentralized paths, like case in point right now, you have the internet, the regular, you know, W2, like web 2.0 internet that has free information of all types of books about history, people, places, and things. There's like, we were talking about how, well, like I was talking about the point of how there were people who was writing books back in the seventies and the sixties about things within the, the, the history and the cultural development of like indigenous peoples in Africa and Australia and like North America, South America, whatever from then. But right now we're going through this whole thing of, or really for a number of decades now, where like those voices were checked by the gate guards because they didn't meet the academic narrative of how history was looking to pre be presented. And I also look at the same thing in regards to the church. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say everybody knows, but a number of people know that the, the, the church has some of the oldest books and documentations in the world, but they don't let that shit out. Right. Well, the, uh, the Vatican has an entire underground library that like 10 people out of the year get to see it. And you're not allowed right. to like get information out of it. And it, it's all the old, old and original data points. Right. You see what I'm saying though? Like, and we did that on the analog, like, and, and, and going to the point of, yeah, I don't know if you'll know this, but apparently, uh, Nikola Tesla's father was a Vatican librarian. And that's how he got access to all his knowledge. He was a what? Nikola Tesla's father was a Vatican librarian. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never heard that one. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Now, what I think is interesting, bro, is like, even on the thing you're talking about, right? Like, they're going to put up all these digitalizations and stuff like that for stuff. And the way they seem to do it is first it's free, then they charge, and then they just keep going up in price. Like look at all the best uh, tech companies started off free. Now they charge and they're starting to go up in price. And as what they do is they, they do it for free to get everybody used to the ideal. Like my generation people, I'm a millennial. So the number of millennials that travel inter internally within their nation is extremely low. It's less than half. Okay. The generation before millennials, it was almost half. The generation before that, it was almost 75%. The generation before that, it was almost a hundred percent with inside their nation. Then you go, okay, number of people that leave their nation. And, um, I know like in the nineties, it was something like one in 10 Americans had a passport. And out of those one of 10 Americans, like eight of the 10 would actually use it per year, at least once. N nowadays, uh, you're lucky if one in 500 Americans even have a passport. And then out of those one of 500 Americans that have a passport, less than 3% of them use it per year. And that, that's a scary p point of data. So if you say, oh, we're going to allow you guys to see any landmark virtually for free, of course, we wouldn't jump on it because they already think to themselves, I ain't ever going to be able to get there. You know, rather either financial, uh, whatever reason, because there could be other reasons, but they're never going to get there. And so that will give them this opportunity. And once they're used to it, their kids are starting to get used to it. They start charging and their kids are going to be like, okay, yeah, it's kind of traditional. Let's do this. 
Now you're on a subscription model. Then next thing you know, their kids. So now three generations, uh, two generations more down, uh, they're going to be like, I can't pay for it. I can't keep that tradition running stuff that we already see people doing like, like, like when I was younger, a lot of my family stopped doing Christmas just because they couldn't afford to do it no more. You know, couldn't afford to go to, to grandma's house or couldn't afford to get tree and couldn't afford, um, getting everybody presents. And now like my kids generation, when they're my age, large, almost a large portion of them are like, I'm not even able to celebrate rather it be can't afford it. It won't legally be allowed to do it. Like in my town where I'm at, we can't legally celebrate 4th of July. Can't get to the summer. So we, we have dry seasons. We can't run a barbecue, uh, not allowed to do fireworks till legal. Um, you know, like things like that. And it's like, you get caught drinking in your front yard, um, on 4th of July. And it's like a $7,000 fine. You get caught barbecuing in your front yard now backyard they won't say nothing but in your front yard seven thousand dollars fine you get caught using sparklers something you can make with household stuff you will get a seven thousand dollar fine whoa that's wild bro um wow okay so now, like they won't stop you they won't, they won't be like, no, you can't do it. They'll wait for you to do it and then go, okay, here's $7,000 fine. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's wow. Jesus. Um, hmm. so wow. I, I, I'm really fucking flabbergasted on that one. I know folks will probably hear this and be like, yo, what the hell? Like y'all are really left. Like, yes, we did. This is what happened. As I've said, metaverse is the other side. It's two dudes geeking out about metaverse related things. And like, this is not financial advice. This ain't about price talk. This ain't about speculation. This is about like tech stuff related to metaverses. And then the things that we see now that is like here and real and workable and functional and being tested. And then like how we see it down the road and how it relates to other things happening in our lives that. Some things are good, some things are bad. Some things have a logical reason to them. Case in point, if you live in an area that is that highly arid and dry during the summertime, okay, hey, you can't do, you know, fireworks. Like, wow, like, that, like, that is one of the most, quote, Americanist holidays ever. And then they'll be like, well, no, nah, we can't do that in this town. Like we Americans, but like, no, nah, we can't do that. You know, what's funny is like, it's technically illegal to tell Americans they can't celebrate 4th of July. That's why they, that's why they won't tell us you can't do that. They'll just give you a fine. And then on the fine, it'll say dry season. And it's like, even if the ground isn't, even if the, even if we had rain that day, if it's during dry season, you better have a permit. Wow. wow. But these are the things, folks. These are the things. Like, it, it, it sounds unrelated, but there are some um, connections in there. Um, and as you can like, see, like, remember the garbage men? They get in trouble if they're not seven minutes, seven minutes, seven minutes, seven minutes. Like, they have to keep all their routine and everything. Remember the major? She was late. And it wasn't being like, her regular hours, it was a random call. She was late and she, she got, he was pretty much like, well, why are we keeping you if you're going to show up late, bro? Yeah. Um, that is true. Like, <laughs> like, man, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I, I like tech. I do enjoy playing with things like the Oculus. I enjoy playing in the other like metaverses and stuff. And they're like, we're going to eventually get into doing some other things, um, within some of the, you know, newer, older metaverses out there. Yo, you know what I've seen today? I've seen a commercial for World of Warcraft. I rarely watch regular TV. So for anybody listening to this and it's like, well, why is he so surprised about a commercial? It's because I rarely watch regular TV. Most of what I consume is either YouTube related 
or it is on some kind of streaming application. So I could be watching something that stopped being made like two years ago, right? Or I could be watching something like at season five and never touch season one. But nonetheless, like when I see regular TV and I see these commercials, I just be like, holy crap, like that's what's being put on TV nowadays? Yo, there is a drug that I swear to God sounds like a street drug name, but it is a pharmaceutical drug. It sounds like a rapper, a mumble rapper's name. It's Sky, Skyzy or something like that. And I, and I seen the commercial and I like, what the hell? Like that just sounds like a street drug or like a, a rapper's name. It doesn't sound like a real drug. And then the side effects are crazy. The side effects are crazy. The world of one time. Man, bro, one time, man, bro, one time I heard, a, uh, there was a pharmaceutical drug commercial. I was listening to it and it was like, it was for anal leakage or anal bleeding or something like that. Right. And it caused what it was trying to prevent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. I, 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 I don't understand, man. I don't understand. Like, there was another was... one where it was like, are you addicted to opioids? Take this and try to, and get off of it. And in the end of the commercial, it says, may not release your addiction to opioids, may strengthen, because it's just basically low dose opioid. So they're just basically saying, hey, this might actually not work. It might make it worse. Like, this is the reality we live in. We're, we're working in various ways to biohack ourselves. We're working in various ways to integrate technology that quote would allow us to connect in more, um, um, universal ways. And then at the same time, like the, the way that the tech is being marketed is like, oh, this is so cool. And the convenience of it is great. And like the potential for the, the, the altruistic, you know, views of like bringing individuals and humanity together is so great. And I really be like, liking some of the things that I hear, but then when I see certain other things, I'm just like, and here's where like the other shoe drops. And I just be annoyed with humanity. Cause this is like. We could, we could continue to do the good thing. We really could, but certain people just don't want to do the good thing. I mean, look in Ghost in the Shell. They, if you die and you're, uh, you work for the state in any way, you they don't keep die. you, you don't, yeah, you're still working after you're dead, bro. Yeah. I thought about that. I was thinking about that too. Um, cause they were, her and Bato was having that conversation about that whole thing of like, yeah, like we're, you know, our whole existence needs a, a quarterly or something maintenance, um, fix. Cause if we don't like the body doesn't work anymore, but the mind is still going to be in the thing in, in the, in the, um, in the synaptic, in not synaptic, but in the artificial brain, like the ghost, the ghost will still be in the machine. And it can't go, go nowhere. Like, it's like, look at their, uh, hackers. They're literally brains in a box. Mm. Yo, what movie is like that? Um, is it Normanza that has that same theme? No, oh, probably. Normanza has another thing going on in Normanza, but in Snow Crash, there's a whole, like, Snow Crash is interesting in a number of different ways. But one of the other things that was going on was like, there was a dude who was integrated into his armored car, but it was like, um, a, a, a souped up truck van kind of setup, And like th there were different types of people. And when I say different types of people, I mean it in the sense of there were different groupings of people who did certain types of body alteration. Like there were the people who were the, the, the data carriers. There were the people who were the, um, the, the data collectors. Like, and so they would have like different types of antennas and sensors connected to them because they were always like on the, on the, on the crawl, on the scrape for any type of data that was moving within their vicinity. Um, 
And those were like real world people. And there was like a whole like guild clique of those people. And then there were, like I said, like there were the people who were the data carriers. There were the people who were like the enforcers. There was like the law enforcement people who were on a whole nother like screwed up level of what they was doing. Um, and then there was like this, the, <laughs> there's this uh, um, Italian mafia and the mafia in this universe is like the Yakuza on 10, but they're also like corporate and like integrated into the government kind of in a way. Yeah, Snow Crash is like a whole different type of um, cyberpunk book for real. Um, but nonetheless, I forgot where I was going. Damn, I forgot it that fast. Hey, um, Groove Dude, thanks for joining. If you had any intakes, um, on the whole ghost in the shell or like just this metaverse thing in technology, definitely just raise your hand because we're not going to be on too much longer. We usually run these things for uh, one hour for the folks who don't know, but we definitely did, um, get, um, lost on tangents and like, you know, like I said, it's two dudes who geek out about stuff related to metaverses. Um, so. Hey, yeah. I I'm just here loving the conversation. Uh, uh, appreciate what you're doing and showing some love, showing support. I hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving too. Hey, same to you, bro. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Glad you're here, Mikey. Uh, oh, what's up, Bobcat? Good to hear you. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, man. Man, I always get nervous talking on these things and it's just you guys. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> right? You like we don't know each other. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Anyways, uh, I just like to listen. You guys are doing good work. I feel like sometimes I am the ghost in the shell. Or I well, wish I could be the ghost in the shell. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, guys. That's what's up, bro. So, like, I don't know. For me, today has been a crazy day, bro. Like, it's been good. But I spent my morning. I broke the permissions and uplift. Sent a video up to track proven I could do it. Then I broke the unlockable section on Wax Atomic Hub NFTs. Um, then I made a video proving that I could do it. Um, and then I was just working in the, um, another, I was trying to hack auction. So I mean, it's been a fun day. Man, I need to know more, man. I need to know just, more. Just, uh, love you. Dude. Really amazing. Uh, with the hey, hats. Bob, can I say that again? I said, just breaking shit, huh? Hey, yeah, hey. yeah. I'm glad I'm not near glass today or I would have broke that too. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, they, and this is the thing with the whole, like, actually doing hacks in metaverses. Like, um, well, I guess, okay. So one of the things that we're going to throw out there is, um, we are working to, um, add these Twitter spaces into the general crypto network. And one of the things that, um, I've been working on for like the episodes is here's the audio and then there's going to be a different video playing out with the audio of the Twitter space. And, um, like think of, um, midnight gospel as the reference of, um, how, what's his name set up the cartoon where he took his podcast interview conversation and then he added those into a animated cartoon that the visual style is like Rick and Morty and X amount of it was like a cartoon and it had his own storyline to it. But the majority of the conversation was from the podcast and it did not relate to what was visually going on in the, um, storyline of the animation. And so part of what I'm looking to do is take the stuff that we have available to us. So we're looking at like AI generated art as far as like um, text to audio, text to video, text to, um, picture, um, as well as taking some of our screen recordings from exploring our various, uh, um, metaverse plots in the uplift and Minecraft and in other metaverses, because we'll be going to other metaverses and then we'll just be displaying those things out. Some of the stuff we might be, just be building stuff. Some of the stuff we might just be walking around, like, like looking at things. Some of the stuff we might actually be trying to like actively hack something to see if we could do something that quote, we're not supposed to do, not trying to attack servers, not trying to mess up other players, but we're curious on these things. And this is part of what I want to like 
show out to people. And we, we do understand like, this is not an everybody thing. We know this a hundred percent, but we know there's people out there who would be interested in, in seeing it and also at some point talking about it. And so that's part of what we're looking to do. Um, as you'll see when stuff starts popping up on the YouTube side, that's kind of what's going to be going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think some of it's going to be like similar to Leafy. Leafy is here. If anybody remembers his content where he was always playing with a game behind whatever he was talking about. Um, but I, I can't wait till we do an episode of one of these where we just talk about like front end hacking metaverses. So that way the back end can just meet us front end hacking metaverses. That that's going to be the fun one. Yeah, uh, that'd be dope. That definitely would be dope. Um, huh, yeah, it's going to be interesting because we're already like excellent episodes in, um, as far as how we've been recording and, um, like, yeah, we were talking about this the other day. It's, it's really amazing to realize that we're like four months in and it's been pretty much, um, a, um, a space of every week. And I'm not saying like, that's like, wow, super long, but you got to think about it in the context of. This isn't during COVID anymore. So we're not relegated to be in the house. Like, and I've done been in different countries and time zones. And it's like, all right, bro, we're going to do this today. Case in point, today's the turn. My bad. Sorry about that. Um, case in point, today's the Turkey day. And, um, you know, um, I had said the 3d like, Hey, are we going to do this tomorrow? And he was like, well, you know, we could just let it go. And I'm like, well, I mean, if I don't go out, I'll just be sitting in the house anyway. So, you know, I I'm down to still do it. And he was like, well, I'll be done, you know, with the whole food and everything by this time. So it'll work for him too. So I was like, all right, Hey, let's do this episode and we'll see who listens and we'll see how this stuff goes. So, but this is the part of where, you know, you put in the work when like no one's really paying attention and you see who it draws and you go from there. At least that's how I'm looking at like pretty much all of this content creation stuff right now. If you paid attention to me when shit wasn't popping, like when things is popping and I can do something to help you, like the idea is to remember like, all right, this person was here when no one else was paying attention to me or like this person helped me build it when no one else believed that we could do shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Russell is like, and that's one thing that me and you have in common is like, we're, we do what we want. We don't really care. Like we, we do what we think we need or what we want to do instead of like what other people are pushing. Like I just thought now about the whole multiple things on wax, like less than two days ago. And I guess it's been out for like three days and I tried a bunch of things and then I talked to Danish and, you know, I'm just trying to let my mind drift and it came back and said, like, oh, wait a minute. You no, know, I didn't try this stupid thing and it works. And it's like, well, you know, it is what it is. Cause it's fun. But man, like, woo, like, uh, I remember when I, I did the, like, bunch of stuff on, on Ethereum and people were like, oh, no, 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 that ends it can be the same. Now look at it. Ethereum, like full web pages on there. They got so much more. I've got seen like the new music thing. They, this guy made an entire EQ player thing and it's on IPFS, but, uh, OpenSea is able to view it because of his custom contract and got set up. It, it's so fucking badass. Oh, dope. And like that, that like, okay. So, all right. You know, I don't want to run into this one because we're already like on the hour 30. And it will definitely run into a whole nother conversation. But at some point, we definitely have to get into this whole situation with OpenSea, Infura, and this whole fingerprinting stuff that they're doing. Um, I honestly think they're only just changing their privacy policy to reflect what they were already doing. That's just my thought process on it. But um, that's definitely going to be something that is, is, is relatable, is re 
relevant to metaverses and the AR experiences as they're being built out and connected in the blockchain crypto space. But that's yeah. going to be another conversation that we definitely have to jump down that rabbit hole. Um, cause I'm also curious to see what other things come out over the next couple of weeks and months about that. Yeah. Cause I think, I think someone first called uh MetaMask out for tracking IPs when they found out that MetaMask was blocking specific countries. And I do know that there is a way to like root your RPC out of Infura. So you can actually use your own, um, endpoint or node ser uh, for service data. Um, and fully use MetaMask, but at the same time, it's like, you know, MetaMask is a company. They're not exactly just a web three service or anything, and they have to make money, right? Mm -hmm. They do, but all right. So I'm gonna say this, this would be another conversation that we will have to schedule out at some point to get into, um, next week, which movie do you want to go with? Cause it was, um. It was Free Guy that Brandon said. And then what did ACU say? I forgot the name for the movie. Something Control. Gravity Control? Uh, I don't remember, but the movie he was talking about is actually really freaking recent. Hmm. Um, well, we'll figure it out and then we'll post up about it. So, um, all right. Do you want to do the rating for the standalone comp complex um, episode 12? Absolutely, bro. So, um, let me see. I, I'd already posted mine while we were talking. I thought about okay. that. <laughs> and I wanted okay. to make sure I, I put it down because before I forget. Um, so, like, the UI of how their people interacted and stuff with the interface, um, I put down a zero because it's a hundred percent, uh, text and thought to speech, even for people who don't have the implants, they just use the text, the speech, and then eye coordination, which we do have eye coordination, uh, pointers where you use your eyes and mouse, but yeah, bro. Oh, no, sorry. I didn't mean to do the hand up thing. I meant to do the, <laughs> um, clap thing. Aye, aye. Um, um, and then UX, so, I, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, UX, their interface or experience with it, um. I put it zero because it is dramatically different. It's more like a video game, um, because of how interconnected everything is. Right. And then hardware, I put one because we do have some implants and there are these things that you can actually, people who are deaf can get implanted and they can actually connect into an audio jack that implant and have a certain program to have everything pushed through there. Um, because they can't actually hear with your ears. They have to use that machine. So it's a type of, uh, vibrating internal pieces like that. And then, uh, metaversal experience though, I also put, um, a zero, uh, just because like with it, the experience that they get inside their metaverse is still like able to react to them in some form, unlike what we have. Okay. So if I'm understanding your score, right, basically like we're so far off of what are of the, of the concept and idea of that metaversal environment that was shown in that episode, like for what we have today, the closest thing we have is eczema on the hardware. But it's like even some base, 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 base level stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, okay. I, okay. Th besides hardware, the only thing I would say it's close to it is al algorithms, you know? Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. damn. All right. Well, that being the case, like. Now, bro, I don't have to agree. Cause like we have only agreed on one of these so far. Me, mm, that's true. Um, so then I think for the UI, yeah, I, I mean, I think that 
we'll probably see later in this decade when people will start trying to integrate AIs into metaverse spaces. Um, so yeah, I would give that the zero as far as like that user experience, because it is a level of algorithm, AI, whatever you want to call it, that is working to make the, the connection between whatever the thought is and the visual presentation of it. So, um, it's true, true. That, that that's literally only just dealing with one side. Like you got to find what is the connecting medium to transfer the data from the, the brain or the mind over to where the AI can understand what that is. Right. So shit, we might be even further than that. So it might only work in the beginning with only external, um, um, input. So like you got to do the voice to whatever. So the AI hears the voice and then it makes it's, it, it does, it does its thing. Right. Um, and then on the UX, huh? Yeah. We're definitely far off on the, on the user interface. So that's a zero, like you said, and then on the UX, um, no, I, you know what? And here's, I'm, I'm gonna give the zero simply off of this. We don't have anything that I've heard of that has been able to draw people in to the level of crying. Oh, that's a good point. Cause yeah, because she has an what, extremely emotional effect from what she saw. Right. And that was the same thing for everyone else with their level of emotional effect. I don't know of anything like that as any metaversal experience so far. So yeah, um, that's a zero then. And then as far as the hardware, I didn't know about the thing that you're talking about with, for like deaf people. That's interesting. Um, I mean, fish. if I, if I, if I still didn't know about that thing, um, It would still be a zero. Okay. Do you, okay. Do you remember the story that came out a couple of weeks ago about the, um, the, um, the, oh my God. It, it, and it's the, and it's the, it's the Oculus dude, the Oculus dude and how he made the joint that had the explosives on it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Die in metaverse, die in real life. Okay. <laughs> it is a very crude and oversimplification of like hardware having that kind of, um, intense, um, connection and executable ability. And uh, when I say executable, I mean, just in terms of like being able to carry out, um, the, the, the function of something that was presented on the virtual side into the real world side, like very crude indeed, but like it's, it's arguably here. Um, I don't know if he made any, if he actually made a, a workable model, but I know that like, it's definitely making its rounds around in the cosplay world right now. Like I've seen a couple of pictures and stuff of people making mock-ups of what they think he made. Um, yeah. Cause he said he originally designed it to do that. I didn't read that article. That's fucking like, bro, what are you thinking? No, like, yeah. Someone had, someone had brought up like an, uh, a video of him from, I guess when he was first working on it and he mentioned the fact that it was going, it was going to allow for dying in the virtual realm. Mm, like that, okay. that's his original model plan, you know, like rather his actual model originally had anything to do with, but that his original model plan was to give people the ability, if they died where they're doing, they die in real life. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a whole next, le next level. Um, okay. So I guess in that one, then I'm gonna give it a one, two on that one for hardware. And then what was the uh, last one? 
uh, metaversal experience. Metaversal experience. Uh, no, we don't, we don't have anything that is that level. Like we don't, um, no, I, I, I don't think we were, we're there. Like granted, we do have interesting stuff as far as like how haptic suits and stuff can work and like those new running treads and all that, but not it's definitely not for how it was presented to that level in that episode. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think this is going to be the second one where we're on the same like rating of, um, yeah, like that was, that was definitely a pretty intense, um, experience how, how they displayed it, but you know, eventually we, as, as we've seen technology evolves and it is not just a, a a one point of, of development and done, right. It's iterations of, of progression. So yeah. 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 All right, bro. So we are at the close. Um, we're at the end. We gave our rating. We both agreed on this thing of where hardware was the only one that got a one, everything else got a zero. Um, and that is it. So just in case you don't know, um, I'm Trek with two K's co-host here is 3d. We are the folks behind the builder DAO, And, um, we basically made a NFT, um, uh, faucet that we built out in, well, really 3d did all the heavy lifting. I just like supported in other ways that is actually the first NFT faucet in a metaverse and we did that in the uplift and you can find out about it if you check out the twitter account and if you check out the site um and read how we did our builder down and everything and then like how you can get the uh token um or that sorry the nft that does the generation of the faucet that's a whole other thing on Twitter. itself but nonetheless hashtag we are not tourists um this has been another episode of Metaverse is the other side of 3D. Close this out because I'm rambling too much. Hey, bro. So everybody, thank you for showing up. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something new today. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing a live stream later. So if you want to catch it, check it. And everybody, whatever you do, don't forget the Metaverses are here for you. Just remember, uh, we, they, we might take cash, credit, and crypto, but we'll take your heart for free. Guys, enjoy, okay? I'm done with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, all. All right, man. Later, Bobcat. Later,